I got started working with nematodes because I was very interested in studying the basic causes of neurodegenerative diseases, like Alzheimer's disease. The first time I looked in the microscope and saw these little worms wiggling across the plate, my first thought was, oh, how cute. And um, so I was actually a little surprised. And it turns out there are two kinds of people. There are people who think the worms are cute, and there are people who think the worms are kind of gross and have nightmares about them. Um, so I luckily fell into the former camp and I really enjoyed working with them. What I came to appreciate was how complex and interesting these tiny little one millimeter nematodes are. So they actually have many organ systems. So they have something like a skin, they have a reproductive system that's very interesting, and they have actually a sophisticated nervous system. Because they're transparent, we can put in fluorescent proteins and label certain proteins within neurons and actually watch in real time in a living nematode what those actual molecules are doing. We and others have actually put in some of the sticky proteins that accumulate in Alzheimer's disease or other neurodegenerative diseases. And if we put them into the neurons, we see that the animals, they just don't remember as well. Sometimes they become incoordinated. They can't move quite as smoothly or as quickly. So for example, normally they leave these sinusoidal waves like a track. And if you were to touch them on the nose, they actually would back up sort of a body and a half length and then go forward and then turn um, in what's called an omega turn. And actually, because there's only 302 neurons, we know the exact circuitry of exactly which neurons are involved in each part of those sort of processes. And so if, if we were to break the circuit, we can see, oh, you touch the nose, either they don't react to it and they keep going forward, or they back up too far, or they don't make the correct turn away from the noxious stimuli. And then we can actually kind of break down the question and say, well, what exactly is going wrong? And in the case of our work, we've found that there are um, certain transcription factors that control what genes get expressed. And sometimes those transcription factors are turned on erroneously with age or with some of these abnormal proteins that we put into the animals. And you know, once you have something like a transcription factor, you think of that as a target um, and potentially a ways to manipulate it, to get it to behave correctly, might, you know, many years in the future, lead to a useful therapeutic. <laughs>